today for staying on with us at the Digital Fundraising Summit. Uh, I just want to take one minute to share with you a few things. So uh, I want to thank some of our sponsors, Harbor Compliance, as well as Joe Goresh. I want to thank all of our speakers, including the next speaker, Allison Glazer from Whole Well. I just want to share with you, we do have a digital fundraising course that you can take. It takes you $0 to $10,000 uh, in 30 days for $4.99. Check us out. We'll include those links. And again, this summit is hosted by Cosvox. We're a digital fundraising platform for nonprofits. I am one of your co-hosts today, Rob Wu from Cosvox, founder and CEO. So uh, without further ado, since we're a little bit behind schedule, I want to introduce our next speaker, Allison Glazer. Allison, how are you doing today? Hi, great. How are you? Pretty good. Um, Allison, I was checking out your LinkedIn, and you have amazing experience. So just so the audience knows, Allison works at Holwell, and Allison, you can talk more about that, obviously. But I thought what was amazing is that you manage 1.5 million in ad budget campaigns. I think that's just astronomical from Google Grants, ad management. I think you do Facebook stuff as well. So I'm super pumped because I think a lot of nonprofits don't really know what that is or how to, how to best like navigate through that. So super excited about your presentation today about a $100 Facebook ad budget and what you can do with that. Allison, I'll hand it over to you. Great, we'll share my screen. Um, we can get started. Yeah, so intros we've kind of already done now, but um, my name is Allison. I work over at Whole Whale. Um, we'll skip all this fun stuff, but um, as Rob mentioned, I'm the advertising manager over here. So we do a lot of different kind of advertising platforms, a lot of different organizations. Um, with Whole Whale, we're an agency. We work mostly with nonprofits, but also with some like B Corp, social good companies as well. Um, and I will say that in the time I've been here, the advertising piece is something that has sort of increasingly been a part of our services. It's not something that we initially set out to do, but as the opportunity continued to present itself and as our clients continue to show interest in that and, and see value in that, it's something that has turned into, I think, one of our larger services. Um, and if you're here, I'm assuming that you have bought into the idea of this in some way, but the case sort of for digital advertising in that is that it's pretty low cost and it's very highly targeted. Um, and I think the thing that is most valuable to our clients is that there's really no barrier to entry. So like traditional, like Mad Men-esque advertising obviously has minimums and requires agents and all of these other things. And this is something that we can really do on our own, our clients can learn how to do it and facilitate it themselves. And it's really flexible to the different kinds of goals that different organizations have. These are just a few examples of clients that we've, that we've done this with and that we include these because they're all so different. So if you're donorschoose.org, you want to recruit donors, but you also want to recruit teachers that want to create projects. Whereas if you're greater than needs, you want to get people tested for, for HIV or connect people with resources near them. So really any kind of digital goal that you have, including fundraising, there's a way to create a strategy with digital advertising, whatever that looks like, um, that's, that serves that purpose and serves that goal. I want to just call this out, Rob mentioned this as well, but just calling out the Google Ad Grant, this won't be our focus today, but um, if you don't already know about it, it's a free sort of in-kind grant from Google to 501c3s, it's totally free. Um, really great for like what we call need fulfillment. So folks are searching for something and you're able to say like, yeah, we have that and like here we are. So someone searches for signs of a stroke and the National Stroke Association is able to present them with what we know to be credible information immediately. Um, it's $10,000 in kind Google search advertising a month if you don't already have it for a 501c3 that you're a part of or working with, we definitely recommend it. Um, we have a whole online course about managing it. It can get a little bit tr tricky, but check that out and definitely um, take advantage of this if you aren't already. Um, YouTube, we just heard so much about video and storytelling and um, it really can't be like overstated, I think, how valuable that is for a lot of organizations. We'll talk about um, Greater the Needs a lot during this, but um, they have these incredible stories of people who are living with HIV or AIDS and, and 
sharing those stories widely with folks that are also um, affected by that can really increase treatment rates and, and keep people healthy. So the best thing about YouTube from our perspective is that it's really inexpensive. Um, you can get a 30 second video view for really as little as a cent. Um, and we generally do see costs stay that low. So for folks with a lot of narratives, a lot of video content, this is definitely something to take advantage of. Um, we'll focus on Facebook mostly for today, but a lot of the sort of strategies and frameworks that we'll walk through are very, very applicable to YouTube and also to other digital advertising platforms. Um, and Facebook is what we have in the title of this session, and it's what our clients ask about the most. It's what we kind of spend the most time on. Where we, where we see the most value um, in this platform is really in web traffic and in conversions. So the sort of strength of this as a platform is that it's, it's pretty flexible. So there are a lot of different ad objectives and ad formats. There's a lot of targeting options, you know, <laughs> whether that's good or bad, um, we try to try to use it for good. So this is where we'll spend most of our time today and we'll walk through sort of all of our options here and how you can best, um, best sort of shape those to, to fit your goals. And the reason I, to go back to sort of how advertising has become a greater service of ours or a greater portion of our services is there's really been a sharp decline in return that we get from organic results on, on Facebook and really on all social media platforms um, as sort of algorithms shift away from favoring pages and, and, and more prioritized individual interaction. Um, and so anytime that you've really spent investing in a sort of like Facebook community with your organization, with the exception maybe of groups, is, is kind of null now. It's not really getting you what it used to. So unfortunately, it has sort of become a like pay-to-play platform and, and we might as well, <laughs> might as well take advantage of it. Um, here's a picture of a dog. But we say $100 a month. Really, that's kind of low. We generally try to start folks out around like 500 but if this is all you have, that's really good enough. Um, we can get donations, web traffic, video views, website conversions, really any kind of like digital KPI that you can think of can be bolstered by these efforts. We, we include engagement on social posts because that's the easiest thing to do, but we really would not recommend spending a whole lot of time or money on this. This is like when you would boost a post on Facebook. Don't get a whole lot of tangible value from that. Um, and it's essentially just like awareness, which is a lot, a lot more difficult to, again, prove value, a lot more difficult to prove return on that investment. And so we try to stay away from that, but um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. We'll use Power Poetry sort of as a case study throughout this. They are the largest online poetry platform for young people. Um, so students or just young adults can go on the platform, sign up to be a poet, write poems, share them with one another, comment on one another's poetry. It's all very sweet. Um, it's also, they also have a feature for, um, for teachers who can create like online classrooms where their students within like a safe and enclosed environment can then share with their classmates directly work. Um, and we like them as an example because some, some numbers for them. They have around 400,000 monthly active users. They have over 160 of those classroom groups, a lot of teacher trainings. They have a staff of 2.5 people, which is generous. I don't really even think they have that. And their annual revenue is only $70,000. So they are really used to working with limited time and limited financial resources, and they're still able to really take advantage of digital advertising as a strategy for growing those um, teacher and, and poet numbers. So there's really no barrier to entry here in terms of staff or finances. Um, you can do a lot with a very little. To walk through some basics, these are our sort of like standard steps. So first off, we always want to start with digital goals and what we'll call like a campaign objective which is to say we want to know what we want to get from this because if we don't, there's no way for us to know if we're doing that well. Um, we move on to select targeting to make sure that we're reaching our key audiences, setting budgets and schedules, and then selecting creative and analyzing performance. So we'll walk through each of these. Um, this is just an example of a commitment curve. You've seen some version of this, I'm sure, many times, whether it's a funnel of engagement or some people use like a pyramid or 
whatever it is, the point is that there are sort of different levels of engagement with an organization, and we want to be aware of what those are and who is at each section. So if we're looking at the bottom of this curve is um, someone like liking a post or viewing a video, um, that's a pretty low barrier action is usually the first step that someone will take with your organization. And so if those are our goals, if we want people to view a video or we want people to just like or share a post that we have, um, we want to like think about who we want to show that to. Our highest value donors, that's not really what we want from them, right? That'd be great, but we want to use the, those sort of like entry points to reach newer folks. Those middle of the curve actions are things like signing up for an email or like RSVPing to an event or signing up to be a volunteer. And those are for the people that kind of know you already, but um, like maybe haven't yet taken that sort of like engagement step. And then way at the top, we have like donations um, or actually attending an event and things like that. I think it's important to consider this when approaching a digital advertising strategy, because as I've mentioned, it so clearly maps onto um, who we want to be targeting. We don't want to be asking for donations from someone that we know has never heard of us. Um, and like I mentioned, we don't want to be spending money to show our video to someone who is maybe already on our email list or already regularly engaged with us. Um, we can like engage with them in a much more like personalized and like a deeper way. So when we think about what our goals are, video views, email signups, donations, um, we want to be mindful of this curve and who is at um, which level of, of sort of like commitment to us. Another reason to keep this in mind is that it really directly maps onto cost of what these results will cost you on really any given um, advertising platform. So these are benchmarks from m and from 2017, which now feels very long ago. Um, obviously, there would be a lot of variability in these results. Um, or like these costs depend on so many different variables, but the point is that obviously larger asks cost more. So they had put like a donor at $65 per like donor acquisition and a click at around 50 cents. We've seen this truly all over the map for different organizations with different audiences and different asks. So I wouldn't cling to these numbers so much as understanding that um, if we're going to spend more or if we're going to ask for a sort of like heavier lift from someone, we're going to pay more for that. So moving on to sort of fun, like technical things of these campaigns, this is again really about, or this is really for Facebook, but this sort of structure is what you'll find in almost, or most sort of like self-serve advertising platforms. So Google works on a very similar structure as this Twitter. Um, but essentially we have like our account and then at the campaign level is where we choose an objective or an ad type. And this is why it's so important to set those goals up front. We have the opportunity when we're choosing an ad objective to tell Facebook what we want people to do when they see our ads. And if we tell them that we want a video view versus an email sign up, that will actually help dictate who ends up seeing those ads and then who we're getting our results from. So it's important to have that um, goal at the outset. Within that campaign, we'll have multiple ad sets. This is where we select audience targeting, um, where we set budgets sometimes. Um, so that's where the sort of like fun stuff happens. And then within those ad sets, we can have really any number of ads. And that's where we set the creative and the copy and the landing page if we're, if we're using that. So we'll walk through again each one of these. So the campaign objective, we're highlighting here some of the most common ones, but there are obviously others. So a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. Traffic, we're telling Facebook we just want to get folks over to our site. We want them to click through the link that we're providing. Video views is exactly what it sounds like. You want someone to watch a video that we've uploaded natively to the platform and that is available in the ad itself. Lead generation, we'll talk about later, but it's essentially a way to um, to capture user information within the Facebook platform. So we reduce a little bit of that friction and then conversions. This is where um, Facebook wants you to spend the most of your time. And this is where we probably would recommend also spending most of your time is using the conversion objective. We'll talk about each of these in detail. First being site traffic. This is about as basic as it gets. So we can send sort of like site traffic from Facebook to our site 
costs we've seen here is around 30 cents per click to about five dollars per click to get someone over to your website the cost really depends on your targeting and how narrow your audience is also how competitive your audience is so if you're trying to target like moms in the holidays like you're going to pay for that. A lot of people are. Um, if you have a sort of less competitive audience in an off season, we've seen those costs go down. Um, video views, again, just a view on a post to sort of call back to YouTube. The video or the view quality that we see from YouTube advertising versus Facebook is really YouTube comes out on top. It's cheaper. The viewer retention rate tends to be much, much longer. Um, on Facebook, it's a little bit more expensive and they only, you pay per two or 10 second view or 15 second view. So you're paying for like less engaged users. Um, it's an option. I'm not sure that we would necessarily recommend it, but know that it's definitely available to you. And then leads and conversions again are where we see the most value. So if you're interested in bolstering your email list, um, What's great about this is again, it reduces the friction. So the format allows someone to input their email, their zip code, any kind of, any number of questions really that you'd like within a form that populates within Facebook, which is great. People don't have to leave the, the platform to then take action on your website. Um, so we've had a lot of success with this for like email or like newsletter list growth. National Stroke Association was a great example of this. Um, and so we definitely recommend using this if, again, email like growth is, is something that your organization is prioritizing. And then conversions. This is really pretty flexible and also um, one of, I think, the most common objectives that we use. What we're allowed, or what we're able to do here is drive folks over to a page on our site that has an action that we care about. Um, so donations or form submissions or in this case, like podcast downloads, whatever we want. If we have the Facebook pixel set up, which we should, um, we're essentially then optimizing for the actual action that we want people to take. So whatever that may be. Um, and what that lets us do is sort of cut out the people who like, like seeing like Seth Godin's face and they want to click, but they would like never actually listen to a podcast. And instead of optimizing for the click on the post or just for engagement on the post, we're able to optimize for that end goal. Um, CPA varies here a lot, again, depending on organization, depending on your audience targeting, and depending on the ask. Um, but this is a really sort of like flexible and efficient way to get folks over to your site and then do the thing that you really care about them doing, not just landing on the page and leaving. This last one's kind of a wild card. Um, so Facebook does allow users to make donations through their platform, um, directly through their platform. So if you do have all of that sort of like Facebook donate button fundraising set up, another option is to create a post that has a donate button that doesn't send people back to your site, but actually just opens up Facebook's fundraising or donate platform. Um, again, we talk about like reducing friction. This is another example of that. It lets users give without leaving. Um, the Facebook platform. And so we can create these posts and use them as ads, um, targeting whoever we want. It's really, we've seen it to be effective, although it is a little hacky. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that we would call out is that there are some cons to using Facebook's donate button and fundraising features in general. The largest one being that you don't get any of that user information. So if I make a donate to the Lung Cancer Foundation of America, through this ad and through this donate button, they won't know that I did that. They won't get my email address. They'll get my money, which is great. But um, it's not so effective for cultivating those relationships and building like donor lists that we can reach out to later on. So something to consider, something to test if your organization is getting a lot of um, a lot of fund or a lot of donations through Facebook to begin with, which LCFA was, um, but something to think about. We also have like a pretty fun fundraising dashboard if you're getting donations in general, even if you're not advertising around it, um, available on our website. So check it out. It's through Data Studio. It's very pretty. Um, so <clears throat> moving into like other settings, budgeting, we definitely recommend using campaign budget optimization, which essentially just gives Facebook free range to amongst different audiences and different ads, um, find the cheapest and the highest quality inventory um, for you. 
So definitely recommend that. Facebook also recommends it. They really like for us to use it, so we do. Um, bid strategy, lowest cost is usually what we'd recommend. So once we've set our goals and we've selected those settings already, it's time to move on to who we want our ads to show to. This is the most fun part, in my opinion. So each ad set within that campaign can be a different audience, so different user targeting. We have a lot of options, like a lot of options. We can target folks by their education, age, location, gender, different behaviors, relationship status, other sort of like interests and likes, and it's um, problematic, certainly, um, but we might as well use it, you know, in the most positive way as possible. So. Some options, is, options here, like we mentioned, location, we can get as specific as um, like, like specific store addresses. So in past like HIV testing campaigns, we've targeted Walgreens that were offering free testing with like a five mile radius. So if you're near that Walgreens, you might be served an ad that says you can stop in and get tested for free that day, um, as broad as country, age, gender, and location, and, and language. Worth noting that like gender and age are self-reported, so we can feel okay about that, though it's still fairly binary. Geotargeting, like we mentioned, another sort of um, important thing to note is these options of targeting folks in a location versus people who live in a location versus people who are traveling or were recently in that location. Something to keep in mind, especially if we're doing something like we just mentioned, like like testing at a Walgreens. Um, we don't necessarily need you to live there. We just want you to be in the area. But if you only offer services to folks who live within certain city limits, for example, then we'd want to make sure that we're using people who live in that location um, when advertising those services or programs or whatever it might be. Um, the detailed behavioral targeting is really where things get kind of interesting. So we can target folks by like their employer or the industry that they work in or interests, income level, um, and then perhaps more uh, effectively target different connections. So we can choose to include or exclude people who already like us on Facebook or follow us on Facebook or friends of those people. Um, so lots of options here. An example to go back to power poetry, they might, if they are trying to get, recruit teachers to, um, or rather if they're trying to recruit new students to sign up to be poets on the site, they might target people who are interested in poetry and then exclude folks who are English teachers. So we know that we're not targeting, you know, like 20, like 24 year old English teachers. And in fact, we're targeting 24 year olds who aren't English teachers who might wanna come over and write poetry on the site. Um, I want to, like kind of spend a second on custom audiences, especially when we have a limited budget, we want to make sure that we're getting as much value and as much return from our campaigns as we possibly can. And oftentimes that value comes not from finding new people to introduce to our organization. It comes from sort of like fishing and like the audience that we already have. And so we can create custom audiences based on website traffic to our organization's website or based on customer customer file, which is essentially user information that we, we've collected for through donor lists or through um, like email signups on our site. And so what this does is essentially lets us target people who are already further up on that commitment curve, people who are aware of us, they've engaged with us in some way in the past and might be more inclined or very likely are more inclined to sort of take that next step or engage with us more deeply. So to use Power Poetry as an example again, um, they might create a custom audience of someone who's been to their site in the past 30 days, but who haven't added a poem in the past 30 days. So these are people that they know, know who they are, they were on their website, but they didn't do what we really want them to do. And so now Power Poetry can create this audience and shoot, um, serve them an ad that encourages them to take the action that um, we really want them to take. Another example of this would be people who visited your donate page, but then didn't actually make the donation. We can now serve them ads that have a donation ask and try to push them over the finish line in that way. Placements will breeze over this. Um, use automatic placements if you can. It just shows, it expands your inventory options on all of Facebook's advertising platforms, um, generally lowers costs. Moving on to creative itself. <laughs> We've all seen ads, lots of different options here. I want to highlight this call to action button. There are a finite number of options for this. Important to choose the one that's most applicable to 
the ask that you actually have. There is like a donate one, there's a sign up option. Um, just make sure that we're using whatever is the most relevant. So if we are running conversion ads or just traffic ads, it's going to be important that we choose a landing page on a site that's both relevant to what we're, what we're advertising the ad itself, but that provides a pretty good user experience. And so um, we like this example from Donate Life America. Their goal is obviously just to get people to sign up to be organ donors. Um, and this is a really effective landing page of theirs. Register to be a donor button is front and center. We know exactly what they want us to do when we get there. The ask is very, very clear. It also matches the copy and the creative in the ad that got us here. Um, but there's also information. There's more um, like the, like the ask is tied to the information that they have. We're not sending people just to an empty form that, that doesn't remind them why they're there or convince them to do what we want them to do. So this is a good example, but um, yeah, call to action should be front and center. Information should match what we advertise, kind of basic, but we often see that kind of fall through the cracks. Um, ad creative, to sort of go back to what Rain was saying earlier and what we were talking about in the last session, there's um, really a variety of, of ad creatives available to us. So um, we always just recommend to use the best thing that you have. Um, if you don't have high quality videos, but you have high quality images, use those. Whatever you think represents your organization the best and, and gets your message across the best, um, definitely lean into that. No need to be up with the latest. Um, just take advantage of the sort of like highest quality and the most effective um, creative that you already have access to. So if we look, think back to that sort of chart that we had, where we have like campaign at the top and then ad sets within that and then ads within those ad sets, we never want to be running just one ad to one audience. We want to be constantly testing, especially if you're new to advertising and you don't really have a good sense of what things should cost or what they, like what metrics are good for your organization. Um, so here's an example from Cancer Research Institute. We ran these two ads, the copy is comparable, but the, and the images are also not all that different, um, but really valuable that we ran both of them at the same time or showed both to the same audience because through it, we were able to get pretty stark differences in results. So the image on the left got a over a 4% click-through rate, the image on the right got under a 3% click-through rate, and so now we have something to work off of, right? We have a general sense of what our results rate looks like for this audience, and we know that the ad on the left did better. So we can continue running that one, introduce a new image, and try to continue to learn and improve based on those results. So always wanting to make sure that we're asking questions of, of the information that we're given, analyzing that, making insights, and then most importantly, learning and acting on that. So we don't want to run these two and be like, okay, the one on the left is better, and then turn off the one on the right and leave the one on the left. We want to introduce a new iteration and continue that. Um, the yeah, Facebook is where you'll return for most of your your um, your results and and like costs and results rates there. One again, want to focus on cost per result and results rate. Don't get so distracted by impressions and things like that. Um, and then we also really take advantage of Google Analytics to get information on sort of like signups and other goals, but also to compare the quality of overall traffic from these ads to other traffic sources. Facebook Analytics, kind of new, another great resource for just understanding campaign performance. Um, and that is a speedy through at the end to try to save time for questions, but yeah. Great. Allison, thanks so much for that amazing presentation. I think that it is seldom that we have such a deep dive into something specific, something that is tactical. So, if someone wanted to learn more about how they can leverage some of this stuff, where, where can they go? Does Whole Will have some resources? Yeah. So you could definitely email me directly. We also have, as I mentioned at the top, we have a um, full online course for uh, the Google Ad Grant. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, and then we have an entire sort of like catalog of digital advertising like articles and videos on our website. So just hallwell.com slash tips, I think it is. Um, and really everything that you need should be there. Yeah, can you do the audience a favor and, and make sure before you leave today, can I include some of the links in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Um, let me see. I think we're running a little bit behind time, but we have maybe time for one question. Um, and this is from Stephen Duvall. He, he mentions, 
if you use the Facebook donate button, would Facebook use the information they collect to sell an organization that is much like their own? So is it competitive? Does donor information get sold to another nonprofit? I frankly don't know the answer to that. Um, I can't imagine that that like makes sense um, because we're not, we can't access that. So like we're not being sold that. So I can't imagine that they're selling it to other folks, but frankly, I wouldn't, I don't really know. Right. Well, I think that's all the time we have for questions. Um, Allison, you're going to include some links, to yes. some resources. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, of course. Uh, what's, what's next is we're going to take a quick one minute break. We're going to do a little bit of setup over here. And I'm actually super excited because we've been here all day long on this fundraising summit. And a lot of you online today have been doing the same thing. So we have an office wellness session. We brought in a, a mobility expert uh, to help you understand how you can actually get more comfortable at work when it comes to office wellness. So we'll be right back in just one minute. Thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you. 